Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg, and in this tutorial, I want to talk about part module from beginning to advance. How to ask your video related questions? Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content. I will talk about what can we do in the part module, which type of problem can be modeled in each of the modeling spaces, which type of geometry must be modeled as solid, shell, and wire, what is the difference between deformable, discrete, analytical, and Eulerian parts, how can we create an I-beam as a solid geometry, and how can we sketch an I-beam section in the sketch module. This is the environment of part module. Part module is the first module of Abacus CAE. In this module, we can define the geometry of the parts. According to the limitations of the part module, only simple geometries can be defined. When a part or an assembly of parts is imported into the Abacus, they will be imported in the part module. The created or imported parts can be partitioned. Some features of the created or imported parts can be modified. Some features, including fillets, chamfers, and holes, can be added to the imported or created geometries. Now I go to Abacus to show you the part module. This is the part module. If we want to create a part, we must click on Create Part. There are a lot of tools in the part module. For example, these tools can be used for partitioning the parts. And by using this tool, you can create fillet. And by using this tool, you can create chamfer. And by using these tools, we can edit our geometry. Now. I click on create part. In the next slide, I want to talk about the options of this dialog box. Now I go back to the slides. Now I want to talk about which type of problem can be modeled in each of the modeling spaces. All of the geometries can be modeled as a 3D part, but according to the physical and geometrical symmetries, in the model, they can be modeled as 2D or axisymmetric. This simplification will lead to the decrease of the size of the model and speed up the simulation. To do this simplification, the problem must have both of the geometrical and physical symmetries. Physical symmetry means the symmetry in the material, interactions, boundary conditions, and loadings. Now, I want to create a 3D solid I-beam in the part module. I will create a part that its name is I-beam, the modeling space is 3D, and it is a deformable part, and its shape is solid, and I will use extrusion technique to create this part. This is the sketch of the I-beam and its depth is 2000 mm. Now I go to Abacus to create this part. It is 3D, deformable, solid, and the extrusion technique will be used. Here we must enter a value that is more than two times of the maximum length in the sketch of the part. The maximum length is 250 millimeters. So I enter 600 millimeters. And this is the sketch plane. The horizontal 
axis is from negative 300 to positive 300 and the vertical axis is from negative 300 to positive 300. First of all, I create the origin. I will use isolated point and I enter its coordinate. That is the origin. I click on escape and I want to fix it. I use constraints. I use fixed constraint. And now it is fixed. Then I use create lines connected to sketch the geometry. This sketch is similar to the exact sketch of the I-beam section. Now I will use constraints and then I add dimension to the sketch. I use equal length constraint to specify the lines that have equal length. I hold the shift key because I'm selecting several objects. Now I add dimension to the sketch. The sketch is completed. Now I enter the depth that is 2000 millimeters. We have an I beam that is created as a 3D deformable and solid part. Now I go back to the slides. Here you can see a 3D hollow cylinder. If the interactions material boundary conditions and loadings are symmetric with respect to this axis, we can model it in the axisymmetric space. And here you can see a 3D solid brick. And if the interactions and material and loadings and boundary conditions do not change in this direction, we can model it in the 2D planar space. This is a 3D model of the rolling process. This is the workpiece and these are the rigid rollers. And this is the 2D model of the mentioned rolling process. And in the 2D planar space, we will use rigid wires instead of rigid shells. In the 2D space, it is assumed that the thickness of all parts in the z-direction is constant. As the materials have non-zero Poisson's ratio, applying load will affect all of the dimensions of the parts. This will decrease the accuracy of the modeling in 2D planar space. But this problem will not happen when using the axisymmetric space. Uh, this is the z-direction and in the 2D planar space, Abacus assumes that the length in the Z direction is constant. But as you can see in the 3D simulation, it changes during the simulation. And this will decrease the accuracy of the 2D simulation. Here you can see the change of the width of the workpiece along its thickness.
Purple and green curves are results of the 3D and 2D simulations respectively. There are some differences between the results, but the total trend of both curves is similar. Now I want to talk about which type of geometry must be modeled as solid, shell, and wire. All of the geometries can be modeled as solid. If the geometry has a small thickness, it can be modeled as a conventional shell. Also, there is another kind of geometry in the abacus that is named as continuum shell that is capable of thick geometries modeling. Modeling parts as a shell is a type of simplification that decreases the model's size and simulation time. If you want to use truss and beam elements, the part must be modeled as a wire. Now I want to talk about what is the difference between deformable, discrete, analytical, and Eulerian parts. All of the materials have a finite value of stiffness and Young's modulus intrinsically. In a mechanical simulation, including contact interaction, if the stiffness of a material is significantly larger than the stiffness of other materials, we can assume that it is rigid and does not deform. Discrete rigid or analytical rigid. This simplification will decrease the complexity of the model and the simulation time. Eulerian parts use a different point of view in comparison to the other types of parts. The other parts use the Lagrangian point of view. If we define a part as a discrete rigid, it must be meshed in the mesh module, and all of the geometries can be modeled as discrete rigid. And if we define a geometry as an analytical rigid, there is no need for meshing that part in the mesh module and only the simple geometries can be modeled as analytical rigid. Here you can see that there are limited options for the base feature in comparison to these options for discrete rigid. In the mechanical simulations, no outputs are calculated in the rigid bodies, including displacement, stress, strain, and temperature. Here, you can see that stress and strain and deformation is calculated in the workpiece because it is deformable. But nothing is calculated in the rigid bodies. Rollers are modeled as rigid bodies. Here, the extrusion process is modeled in the axisymmetric space using analytical or discrete rigid parts. As the geometries of the punch and the die are simple, we can model them as analytical rigid parts. And here, the mentioned extrusion process is modeled in the 3D space. Die is modeled as a discrete rigid part because it is more complex. Now I want to talk about the use of Eulerian parts in the abacus. Here I have modeled a column of water that is subjected to the gravity. The simulation is conducted using the dynamic explicit step. And as you can see, as the simulation is started, the column starts to collapse because of the gravity load. And as the simulation is continuing, you can see that the water is flowing. In the following tutorials, you will learn to define an I-beam as a conventional shell in Abacus. Moreover, I will exemplify other tools and capabilities of the part module. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp, and you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp, and we can make special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high-quality simulations for your thesis, exercises, and industrial projects. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.